Hello world, it is Monday, October 11th, 2021, and a beautiful morning this morning, but again, quite warm for October. It's already in the 60s, but I think um, more normal weather will be coming later in the week. The devotion for today is entitled Not a Test by Mary Ludy. <clears throat> and Mary bases the devotion upon Psalm 145, verse 16. New International Version. You open your hand and satisfy the desires of every living thing. And Mary writes, I've heard a lot of painful stories of rejection by the church. Many are about being denied communion. You're the wrong denomination. You're trans. You're not baptized. You're on the spectrum. One person's pastor informed him that his presence in the communion line upset people. He had been badly disfigured in a fire. Would he come after church alone? He never returned. A woman with an eating disorder once told me she didn't deserve to eat. She'd eat when she got thinner and felt worthier. That day never came. She stopped going to communion, too. Communion, the church had taught her, is for worthy people. She wasn't. Listening to her, it struck me that when a church, any church, tells someone who wants communion, no, not you, its voice isn't all that different from the voice of an eating disorder, <coughs> excuse me, telling sufferers they can eat only when they've passed the test. In an article I read years ago, the author, who was in recovery, described eating as a terror-laden battlefield of shame and secrecy, a constant judgment of unworthiness. But she's going to communion. She knows it's not the same for everyone, but communion is helping her heal. Communion offers a different definition of food, a gift, not a test. She first sensed its graciousness when worshiping at a church with an open table. No talk there about being deserving, just an open-handed invitation from an all-satisfying God. Many people experience food as a stand-in for worth. <clears throat> Communion isn't that kind of food. If it ever becomes that kind of food in your church, You'll need to repent and start over. Because, as the author wrote, the church can't be a source of healing if it behaves like an illness. And the prayer. Open our hands and tables to satisfy each other's deepest longings as your open hand satisfies every living thing. Well, this, I find this devotion very powerful in so many different ways. For one, that very last sentence, because as the author wrote, the church can't be a source of healing if it behaves like an illness. Churches should be welcoming, accepting uh, places, and especially the communion table. I mean, the very word communion is to commune, to come together, to gather together as one, as family. Um, and if you can't come together at the table... There's something wrong. This devotion also reminded me of um, uh, my parish priest when Laurel and I were first married. And he would always open his uh, services with, uh, yeah, I celebrate an open table. Any for whom this table has value is welcome here. And he meant it. There weren't checks to make sure you were Catholic or not divorced or whatever. Anyone for whom that meal had value, was welcome there. And I think as Nadia Boltz Weber once said about denying people communion who, who are divorced or um, drug addicts or whatever, how can you deny somebody something they most need at the time they most need it? It's not, you're not doing it right if, you're, if that's the approach you're taking. And really that's the approach, I should say, the church should be about communion, about joining together, about bringing people together, about being one family in Christ. So if we're not doing that, we got a lot of work to do. Hope you have a good day, and um, I will talk to you again tomorrow.